Most animals get cancer, but some species, like whales and elephants, rarely have cancer. Why do whales not get cancer? If we know why whales do not get cancer, can it be applied to people? In fact, these questions are related to a very famous paradox in biology called the Pitos Paradox. Hey folks, welcome back to Conspiracy Theorists, your go-to channel for all the strange, mysterious conspiracy theories. In today's video, we'll discuss all about the Pitos Paradox and the conspiracy theory that cancer is a tool for population control. So, let's begin. Cancer is currently the biggest killer of human beings. But what is cancer? On average, a human body has about 40 trillion cells. These 40 trillion cells work together to maintain our body's basic function and health. As long as we live, these 40 trillion cells will be working non-stop. After some time, they will age, and there may be abnormalities. To ensure the normal functioning of our body, cells commit suicide when they reach certain age, regardless of whether they are healthy or not. 400 billion cells in the human body die every day, equivalent to 1% of the total number of cells in the human body. But don't worry, our body has another mechanism that will regenerate cells. When a cell is close to death, it begins to divide and clone itself. A young version of the cell is generated, replacing itself to work, and then the old one dies. However, the cell may have a small probability of making errors when dividing, and the copied cell is different from the original. Such abnormal cells may not work as normally as the original cell. Our cells have self-repair functions. It repairs itself when the replication goes wrong, but this repair function has limitations. It cannot fix all errors. If the repair is on successful, a suicide procedure of the cell is initiated, allowing itself to die to ensure that the cell does not remain in our body. This seemingly perfect system has a loophole. The suicide program of cells may also have errors, causing them to be unable to commit suicide. In this case, an undead error cell will be produced. To avoid this, our human body has another function as the last line of defense, which is the immune system. The immune system detects these cells every moment. Once such zombie cell is found, the immune system will destroy them to ensure the normal functioning of our body. However, this last line of defense could also be breached. These zombie cells may mutate to escape from the immune system. Such abnormal cells will not commit suicide, nor can they be killed by the immune system. The problem is that it also retains the function of the division. It can replicate itself just like normal cells, and their number can increase rapidly. And these zombie cells that can escape the immune system are what we call cancer cells. They do not contribute to our body's normal functionality and rob the nutrition of other normal cells. Since the number of normal cells is certain, the uncontrollable growth of cancer cells is life-threatening. The Pitos Paradox was proposed in 1977 by the famous British immunologist, statistician Richard Pito. When he was studying cancer incidences in humans and other animals, he discovered a very strange phenomena. Normally, we think that the incidence of cancer is proportional to the size of the individual. The larger the size of the body, the greater the chance of cancer, and vice versa. For example, in 1998, the United Kingdom conducted a 25-year follow-up survey of more than 17,000 civil servants of males, excluding most objective factors such as smoking and drinking, and found that height and chance of having cancer were directly correlated. Later in 2011, a survey of more than 1 million women in the United Kingdom reconfirmed the positive correlation between height and cancer rates. The same survey was conducted on dogs, showing the same results. The proportionality may explain by the correlation between the size of the body and the number of cells. If the cancer rate of the cells is constant, then the more cells a body contains, the more likely it is to produce cancer cells naturally. But at the same time, Pito studied some cross-species cancer rates and found a very strange phenomena. The positive correlation between body size and cancer rates does not apply to other species. For example, comparing humans and mice, the number of cells in the human body is around a thousand times more than that of a mouse. According to the correlation, we would expect the cancer rate of a mouse to be a thousand times lower than a human because of the small body size. But in fact, the chances of cancer for humans and mice are practically the same. This problem occurs not only in comparison between mice and humans. Whales, the largest mammals, have a cell number of about three million times that of mice. 
then according to the positive correlation between body size and the chance of having cancer, we would guess that the possibility of having cancer for whales should be 3 million times higher than that of mice. Strangely, whales rarely get cancer. Such contradiction to the positive correlation between body size and the chance of having cancer is Pito's paradox. After Pito's paradox was proposed, many immunologists and medical scientists began re-examining the fundamental principle of cancer occurrence. Still, unfortunately until today, more than 40 years have passed since the proposal of the paradox, and no definite answer has been found. In particular, three hypotheses were proposed to explain Pito's paradox. We will discuss these hypotheses in the following part of this video. The first hypothesis was proposed according to the theory of evolution. It simply states that different species may have different chances of getting cancer because of the content of evolution. According to the theory of evolution, all species evolved from single-celled organisms. In this process, there is a clear trend. No matter how the shape changes, the size changes from small to large. Then why is the cancer rate of large species, like whales and elephants, so low? If getting larger in size implies easily getting cancer, then such evolution would not be favorable. The species should improve by lowering the chance of getting cancer in its evolution. Evolution. If this is true, then it means that the factors that control the chance of getting cancer are determined by genes and are changeable. Later, with the development of genetic science, the gene that inhibits cancer cells was really found. The number of these genes in different species was also different. For example, one such gene was found in a mouse's DNA, and 20 have been found in elephants, which means that multiple genes in an elephant's body inhibit the formation of cancer cells. The number of such genes in a whale's body is still not known yet. Besides, this type of gene that inhibits cancer occurrence seems to be in all species, but they are just not activated. We humans also have it. In 2002, scientists tried to activate the cancer inhibition gene in mice and found that the chance of having cancer was significantly lowered for the mice. However, another side effect occurred. The mice began to decline rapidly. As a result, their lifespan did not change. Their aging process was much more rapid and they had a very similar lifespan to the normal mice. The second hypothesis states that the chance of getting cancer depends on the rate of metabolism. For example, mice and whales' total number of heartbeats in a lifetime are very similar, yet their rates of metabolism are different. Mice metabolize fast, and whales' metabolism is relatively slow. A high rate of metabolism causes an increased rate of cell division and vice versa. If the rate of cell division is fast, it may be more likely to have errors that cause the formation of cancer cells. The third hypothesis is that it is possible to reach an equilibrium state with cancer, but the bodies of some species are simply too weak to reach that point. Many systems have equilibrium states. Once such state is reached, the net change of the system will be zero. If this is true for cancer cells, the formation of new cancers should be inhibited by existing cancer cells after reaching equilibrium, and the number of cancer cells in the system will remain at that level. The number of cancer cells at equilibrium may be simply too high for the body to handle, and we die before reaching the state of equilibrium. Yet, the bodies of some species, like whales and elephants, may be strong enough to withstand it. These three hypotheses have one thing in common. They imply that cancer is a natural protective mechanism. Cancer limits the lifespan of different species. It's the immune system of mother nature and a tool to control the populations of different species. And that was the video, guys. Do you have any conspiracy theories about PETA's paradox, cancer, and plans for population control? To know more about this and other conspiracy theories around it, comment below and let us know. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to regularly receive our content. Thanks for watching.